Happy New Year, guys, and welcome to the WDW Gaming of the Future. So, without further ado, let's see what 2020 has in store, eh, shall we? Yes, guys, welcome back. And oh my god, can you believe it? It's finally here. I did it. I released it on time. I did it when I said I'd do it. I wanted to deliver. I delivered. Boom! 2020 is the year for this channel, I'm telling you. <laughs> so, um, okay, guys, we're going to be looking at um, our development. So I'm going to go right back to scratch. But uh, before we do that, uh, just a quick one. So yes, it is a new year. Um, I hope you enjoyed a little bit of a shock back there. <laughs> Um, welcome to 2020. I hope you all had a cracking new year, whatever you decided to do, and I hope you stayed as safe as I told you to. Me, personally, I was in bed for half eleven, <laughs> so I didn't exactly celebrate it with a bang, but uh, a week later now we're going out with a bang anyway, as we're coming in with a bang even, should I say. So, um, without further ado, let's jump in. So, what I'm going to tell you here, there's a little bit of a caveat to this video. Um, I'm not going to be teaching. Okay, this is just sort of so you can see how I do it, roughly how it's done, that sort of thing. I'll explain some of the more complex things as we go along. Um, but I'm not going to be strictly uh, showing you how to do it or teaching you how to do it or anything like that. Now, if you guys want to see that, you can let me know. Um, or if you want to carry on the way it is. So, but this, this video is going to be sort of mostly waffle. Um, but if you're happy with that, then that's fine. Let me know either way. Either pop something down in the comments or whatever. Um... So, guys, I was really stupid last time. I said that the den was <laughs> was web de uh, webdevelopwolf.com. It's webdevelopwolf.co.uk forward slash den. I got the I got the thing wrong. Uh, and I haven't had a chance to change the thing at the, the video at the end yet. So I'm going to put the proper link down in the description. Um, the shop link is still right, though. So if you do want to go and grab yourself some really cool merch for 2020, looking cool into the new decade, go on there and have a look. Uh, but remember, it is webdevelopwolf.co.uk forward slash den. So, please ignore the end of the video, it's wrong, I will fix it for the next video. I only realised at the end of the last video, and I've only just remembered that I haven't fixed it as well. Um, okay guys, so we're going to be looking at, in this video, we're going to be looking at concepts, inspiration, designs, and those sorts of things. Um, we're going to be setting the project up in Unity so that when we're ready for the next video, we can hit the ground running. I don't know how long this video is going to last yet, I'm just going to see sort of what is comfortable. I'm expecting anything between 20 minutes to an hour. Um, it depends on like when I edit it together, how long it lasts, um, so I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to try and get these streams out the first Sunday of every month, like I said before. Um, however, that is not, it's not a promise, it's not a guarantee, uh, but that's sort of, that's sort of my aim. But, um, we'll see, anyway. Um, if you want them more frequent, less frequent, don't like them all, do like them. Again, let me know. 2020 is the year for me to be your bitch. So... Uh, what we're going to do then is we're going to jump in. I'm going to uh, switch the screens over, and you will, and we will jump in. Okay, guys. So, okay, guys. So we're going to jump in and then have a look at a little bit of our um, inspiration. So, um, what the game is going to be? It's going to be like an Oregon Trail kind of um, mashup with um, a bit of a bop it real time type thing. So, um, this is always the first thing to do whenever you're developing. Um, come up with your idea, come up with your story, and then see where you go from there, really. So, find a game that you like and maybe try and build something similar with a different story. This is, I think this is why a lot of people do a lot of horror games, to be honest, and it's just purely because um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of resources out there for you doing uh, horror games and things like that as well, but it's also people see a horror game they like, they like the story, but think, well, what if this twist, what if that twist... Um, so I've decided to go down a little bit, bit of a different path because there's a lot of horror out there at the moment, which is cool for streamers, um, but for um, but maybe you know people might want something a little bit different. So this is our inspiration. So uh, I couldn't actually find any screenshots of the original Logan Trail. It's a very old game from the '80s. It used to run on the um, so it does. It, there was one that ran on the PC. There's also one that ran on like the Atari and the Spectrum. So that we're talking a really really old retro game here. Um, but there's a newer version called Organ Trail, which is the same thing, but it's a zombie concept. So I thought, what if we took that and did a hospital uh, ambulance type concept? So this is a few screenshots from 
the game Organ Trail. I have played it on my stream before. If you go to my old channel, which is Will666, which is W3R3, W0LF666, you can actually watch a whole uh, playthrough of Organ Trail on there. So, um, I, I did a little bit of a playthrough, got a few screenshots so you can see roughly. So, the here you can see there's the um, health of the... So, essentially, the... Um, these guys here would be our patients and then this here would be our ambulance um, and this would be our ambulance and this would be our ambulance scene and then you get flashes up for them for when things happen you've got different tabs so you can see what's going on you can blah 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 so you get the idea so this is when it's got a few more people so you can see here we've got health stats and you can stop and rest and whatever you can we've got a little pause button up here uh, some of these things that I haven't introduced into the screenshot yet because I've literally just taken what I want, I've mind dumped it and I've created what's called a gamey moment, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So this is just a roughly, a sort of a rough idea. So there's like positive messages, uh, negative messages, that sort of thing. And why? Whoa, there's ghosts in my Mac. How did it do that? Um, this, is a, so this is a little skit that, again, I haven't done the skits yet, but just to give you a rough idea. So there's little mini games and things like that, but we can jump in. At the, but again, it's all about creating our particular game moment. So, um, what we're going to do next is I'll have a look at something called a game design document I've put together. Now, what the game design document focuses on mostly is that one particular moment. So it's not just, uh, but it, it does do a little bit of a few aspects of the of the game as well. Some of this information might be out of date because bear in mind I'm going back and I'm recapping and all the stuff that was in the original one. So, what we'll do next is we'll have a quick look at our game design document. Okay then guys, so this is what we call a GDD, which is a game design document. So, what this is, this is basically a, a roundup of your game. Now it's going to focus more strictly on uh, on that particular moment, but it's also the little, the little tiny things around it as well that help you to make that moment that little bit more special. So um, you can decide what it's working title is going to be called, or what it's actual title is going to be called, a summary. So if you were to try and do like a, 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 a Steam green light or a Kickstarter, for example, um, you've got all that information that you need to get people interested in that sort of thing. So it's going to talk about sort of your inspiration, who it's aimed towards. A lot of YouTubers do this for their channel. They do uh, PDFs of like who their audience are and things like that, and that helps you get sponsorship and stuff like that. So if you think about it like that, if you're a YouTuber, it's a similar kind of thing. So what it starts off here with, guys, is just your inspiration first. So these are the screenshots that we had a look at earlier. And it's two very different ones so that we can get a rough idea of what we want to do. So we know what type of genre it's going to be, which is a real-time event game. So guys, for those of you who don't know what a real-time event is, for any of you who've played uh, Heavy Rain or, uh, um, or, oh, what's it called? Life is Strange, those sorts of things, Telltale games. Those are what's called real-time games. So it'll give you a button to press and you have a set amount of time to press it. And it's, so an event is triggered and then it, there has to be a button press triggered ever so slightly after. That's all, that's all that is. So it's nothing to really stress over. It is called a real-time event because it is an event in real time. Nothing more to it. Okay, guys, so the, the, the target audience is going to be M for Mature. Um, the reason it's mature is because it's a hospital game. <laughs> uh, there's very little that's mature about being in the back of an ambulance, to be fair. Um, so we're going to use the mouse and keyboard to control it. I've put the keyboard in there as a bit of a, as a bit of a sort of that'll be that'll come later, and that's why it comes second there. Um, but I've put the keyboard in there for accessibility purposes. Really, most of it's going to be controlled with the mouse, like like most real time games, to be fair. So it's going to have a very thematic. So the thematic settings. This is like the the actual theme of our game. So if we were doing like say a Batman game, you'd say the theme of the game was very dark because Gotham City is a dark place and that sort of thing. It's be realistic, it'd be gritty. But for this it's gonna be realistic, it's a city setting and it's gonna be in the back of an ambulance as well. So we wanted to have that good mix of gritty and clean at the same time. Um, if you think um, think of things like uh, other hospital games, so like Surgeon Simulator and things like that, um, all the themes in those games you can see there's like a lot of reds for sort of the blood and the, you know, like the, it's, it's all the imagery and that sort of thing. That's the best way I can put it. So, tech stack, this one's really important, guys, okay? So we're going to be building it in Unity 6 Plus, well, Unity 2019 Plus now, I believe. So, Unity, all it is is a C-sharp framework with an application built on top to control that framework. 
there's nothing special about Unity that... So if you're already a web developer, and you're already familiar with, um, with C Sharp and things like that, you'll already know how to use these things. Um, it's the same language, just a, different, just a different framework. So anyone who's used JavaScript as well, you'll know that you have jQuery and frameworks and things like that. Um, so it's just a different, it's, it's basically a library that you tap into. It's got a bunch of tools for games development and then you access whichever tool you need at the time. So anyone who's familiar with C Sharp is going to be, is going to feel really at home in Unity. <coughs> Even if you don't know how to use it, um, don't stress, don't worry. There's loads of resources out there to go and learn it. You might even pick some things up from this video because, again, it's really not that difficult, to be fair. Um, if you are interested in, in learning Unity, go to a place called gamedev.tv. So I've mentioned these guys in previous videos when I've designed games and put them out there and things like that. So if you go into... I have a playlist, uh, which is the WDW Studio. Go in there, have a look, and I have a little bit of a chat in there about gamedev.tv and some of the really good work that they do to help teach you. So uh, their work, that they're, they're sort of based on doing challenges and things like that. So a lot of my training and web is based on their training game. So go and check that out, guys. Go and check those guys out. They are brilliant. You can find them at Udemy primarily. Udemy very, very regularly have sales on as well. So you can get the courses that are like worth two, three hundred pound for ten pound. Go on there and check that out every time they have a sale. They do have the sales quite frequently, usually around every big major holiday. So like, I don't know, Christmas, Easter. Uh, Black Friday, all those sorts of things. Go and check that out if you want to if you want to learn Unity. Failing that, if you want to do it free, you can go on to YouTube. There's plenty on there as well. Plenty on Google. Unity documents and the actual program to download is free. So, if you wanted to just jump in and learn yourself by reading through all the docs, um, you know you could do. Um, it's easy enough to do. So go on there and check that out if you're interested in learning that. Another really important one, guys, so you may have seen around at the moment, um, I saw an advert for it today when I was out somewhere. I can't remember where I was, it might have been an advert on, on a website or something like that, or maybe on Facebook, that the creative world runs on Photoshop. Most things that are done creatively are done in Photoshop these days. Um, again, guys, I'm not going to teach you how to use Photoshop. Photoshop is that advanced in itself. It took me 15 plus years to learn. And I've still only scratched the surface so I know the web design stuff inside out and the colour tools and things like that. When it comes to being an artist, there's still probably stuff I don't know. Um, you know, because I'm not I'm not really much of a, of, of a... I say I'm not much of an artist, I guess in some way I am because of the, the design and development. But I'm more of a designer than an artist. So if you want to use Photoshop, um, go and check out tutorials. Again, same places. Udemy. Um, YouTube places like that they, they could all teach you how to do how to use Photoshop there's loads of like written tutorials online blogs things like that type in what you want to do and it'll talk you through how to do it so that's another great thing about Photoshop the resources out there are really really widely available it takes a while to learn you can get frustrated bear with it um, it's the best advice I can give you my stuff has improved like so much from sort of here to here over 15 years um, you do just pick it up as you go so don't stress if you get in there and think, ah, what's this? You know, because most people do, to be fair, with Photoshop. Stick with it if you want to learn it. So for sound, we're going to be using Audacity. I might use a little bit of GarageBand as well, but that's purely because I use a Mac. For any of you guys on Windows, GarageBand, I don't think is going to be an option. Um, Audacity is a really simple to use program. I am only going to be doing absolute basic stuff in it. So chopping, changing, looping, and things like that. These are all things as well that we can do in Unity. Bear that in mind, if you don't want to go out, download an extra program and learn something else, you can do all this stuff in Unity. Just bear that in mind. Uh, also going to be using a pixel tiling app to do sort of the backgrounds and the ambulance, things like that. So you can do a lot of this stuff in Photoshop. The reason I personally wouldn't do it is because the pixel tiling apps and pixel uh, design studios have tools that you can see like little previews. They have tools for repetition, which in Photoshop could make it a little bit more tedious. So I'd advise that you do it through something like that. Now, if you're comfortable with Photoshop, you already know how to use it. Brill, crack on. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. I'm just going to show you the way that I do it. So platform want to release it on is Steam. If you don't have Steam, guys, I don't know what Steam is. Um, go on their website, download it and get it if you're a gamer. Because you download games from them. Obviously, you buy them. But then they travel with you. So I've switched. I've had Steam for several years now, probably about 10, 9 or 10 years plus. And I've still got every single game I've ever bought on there, uh, even though I've changed like through through about six or seven, eight different computers since then. 
Uh, you can also get Steam on mobile as well, so anything that comes down on mobile. Um, it'll tell you what's available on Mac and what isn't. If you've got a Mac, it makes it ten times easier to see what will work on a Mac. And the license keys aren't just one hit. You can take them from PC to PC, PC to Mac, Mac back to PC or whatever. You can have more than one computer. You can family share. Go and check that out. Go and download that. Um, I think it's steampower.com, the address. <coughs> That's what I want to release it on. It's a really... It's a lot, a lot of most of YouTubers use to get their games, actually. So, our game moment, guys, is to get one patient from the scene of the injury to the hospital. Now, our game moment is basically this screen here. Uh, we're going to be having a look at a screen for our game moment very shortly. Um, so, we talked about game moment, guys. What a game moment is, it's basically like a snapshot of one part of your game. It allows people to see how your game's going to flow, how it's going to work. Uh, gives people to test out the ver give people a chance to test out the variables and things like that, um, and just see if they like the feel. Like, is something possible to do? Is it impossible to do? Is it too hard? Is it too easy? What would you like to fine tune later? Our game moment will tell us all that, and that's why that's where we start because these are things we need to know before we start building everything else around it. So, what we do for gaming is we work. We don't work in a linear fashion like we do with web. We work with what's called an onion design. So we start off with our game moment, which is here. And then we put the frills on as we go, making it better and better and better until we're happy enough with it to finally release it. This is probably why a lot of games get put back. So you notice that a lot of games have early release dates. So if you look at Final Fantasy VII, for example, the new one, that had a release date initially of like last year, and then it just kept putting back, 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 back. And it's probably because they're adding more and more to it to make it a fuller, completer game. That's why we start with our game moment. And that's what a game moment is, guys. So our game summary... Um, so many trails, real ambulance journey simulator that's in the style of an 80s game Oregon Trail. The patient will get from A to B with as much health as possible, made possible by equipping upgrades, etc. So again, it's just like Oregon Trail. If anyone who's played Oregon Trail, it, you know what? If anyone finds a copy of Oregon Trail, will you please let me know? Because that game was absolutely one of my favourite games. It is amazing. It's one of the best games ever. And yes, there's Oregon Trail out there, but it's not the same. I want to. It's basically where you had to travel across America in, in, a, in a covered wagon and things had happened, like the axe would break and people had become sick and things like that. And um, if anyone does know of a copy of that, please let me know. Please put a comment in the down, you know, at the bottom. So, it's going to be a very similar thing. So each patient is going to be like, is going to be our game moment. That patient's got to get from A to B. Uh, you're going to watch their health um, decrease as they go or increase, or depending on what you do. And then we're also going to watch the journey. You have to watch what the ambulance is doing. So it adds a little bit more content to an already existing popular game so the core player experience we've already talked about it being real time but we know that we want it to be quick paced as well it'll probably get quicker as time goes on or depending on the condition it could be completely randomized so in fact maybe we could give the user the option you know we could give the option to, to randomize the cases do we want them to get harder as they go along do we want scenarios uh, but again this is all something we can build in later and urgency is the key word here guys because we want the game to have a massive sense of urgency when paramedics are out there saving lives, this is the sense of urgency that they're getting and this is what we want to inject into the game. So the central theme, guys, keep the patient alive. <laughs> you know, keep the patient alive, you're doing something right. Because um, obviously, if the ambulance crashes, for example, because that's a secondary thing, a tertiary thing, um, the patient's going to die off the back of that because the ambulance has crashed. So the core thing here is to keep the patient alive. So, design pillar. What a design pillar is, guys, it's basically the type of game uh, you want your game to be. So, if we were talking about Tomb Raider, that'd be um, action, adventure, survival. If we're talking about Call of Duty, it would be a first-person shooter. It would be a uh, online game. Uh, if we're looking at World of Warcraft, it'd be massively multiplayer online and RPG, so that sort of thing. But ours is going to be ours is going to mix real time and strategy. So, possibly later on we could add puzzle solving as well. Um, or maybe that could be like an add-on or a DLC or maybe for version 2. But again, we're going to keep it, let's, what we do with gaming is we start by keeping it simple and then build on it and see what people want. Just like a YouTubing channel really. It's like how I started my channel out just for having a bit of fun. I still do it for having a bit of fun. Uh, but then as, as time goes on, you just sort of build on it and build on it and build on it. And, and it gets better and better and it just grows exponentially. And that's sort of what we're, what we're aiming with this game. So, anticipated remarkability. So, this is what makes our game unique, okay? Um, so, <coughs> if you look at Tomb Raider, for example, what, what made it unique in the 90s? I know I keep coming back to Tomb Raider, which is one of my favourite games. What made it unique in the 90s was the female heroine. And then, as it went on, 
it became the realism that became the anticipated remarkability. So this might change over time, but for now, for this particular game, this particular moment, we know that actions must be performed quickly and precisely. So again, it's injecting that sense of urgency. So it all revolves around this keyword, guys. So anticipated Steam early launch date, we're looking at Q2 2020. I don't know if that's going to happen, I've got to be honest, that's not a guarantee. <laughs> Uh, you've seen how long it's taken me to get this stream out. But that's the that's the wish, anyway. And we can come back to this and change this. It's not a sin to not make that date. You're not making a verbal contract with your MacBook. Um, you know, no one's going to come and hunt you down if you don't do it in that time. But it gives you a rough idea. So development priority. So we know that our game, our game moment is our main priority. That's why it's up here. But then we want to ask ourselves, what do we want to do after that? So we know that we're going to need a title screen, as most games have a title screen. You don't play, continue, new game, etc, etc, quit. Um, we need instructions for how to play it. Um, we need to um, have like maybe a bit of an intro where you can put your own information and make the game a bit more personal. But again, that's not important just yet. The main ambulance travel scene, so the reason our game moment now is renamed and comes after here is because we've had our feedback we're then going to take that, we're going to inject that back into the game, and then we're going to make it better. And then it becomes our travel scene. It's not a moment anymore. It starts becoming a key part of the game. And we're going to have a supply screen inventory. Then we're going to look at real-time events, so escaping thugs and things like that. And then we're going to polish it up and do all the bug fixing. So we'll, we'll probably release a beta. People will play it. If they come across any problems, they'll let us know. So, difference between alpha and beta testing, guys. Alpha testing is testing your concept. Does your concept work? Do people like it? Do they enjoy the game? When they played it, what did they think? Okay, beta is then, okay, we know you like the game, we know um, that you know you like playing it, and we know you like the concept, but now does it work? That's, that's the marked difference. You don't have to worry about that yet, but I just thought I'd explain it. So guys, comparative products. Uh, we've already talked about Oregon Trail, we've also got Organ Trail. The Surgeon Simulator as well, and the reason I've chucked that in there is, again, it's for that sense of urgency. It's that we're going back to sort of this, this theme again, this core player experience. So, this is a... Finally, this is a design document. <coughs> this is what's... Uh, this is a free public mind map on... Um, on I think it's mindmap.com or something like that. Um, so, here's our game, this is our core moment here. Then we know coming off that, we need our title screen. So again, our priorities that we have up here, we've kind of popped down here and then branched out as to what we want to do with them. So we've got a rough idea. So we know what we want to do with our game mode because we're going to have our concepts and that's what we're going to be building first off. But for our title screen example, say we get an idea and it's in your head, you want to get it down on paper so that you don't forget it. So for our title screen, we've got things like flashing ambulance lights, pixel style background, siren sounds, fast paced music, etc, etc. Um... And we've got all these things that branch off around it. So, guys, I'm not going to read all these out. Um, because, to be honest, I recorded this video five minutes ago. And because I messed up and wasn't on the right screen. <laughs> I did read them all out. And now I'm not going to do it again because my throat is killing. So, have a quick look at that. Pause the video if you have to. And just see roughly what we want to do with the, with the game. These are all what we're doing later. These We don't have to worry about these yet. But at least we have them in a safe place so that we can come back to them later. Okay guys, so what we're going to be looking at next is we're going to look at some of our concepts. Well, finally... Why is that not zooming out? There we go. Um, so we're going to look at some of our concepts that we've put together. Um, and then going from there, so then we're going to go into Unity and have a look at that. Okay guys, so these are some of the screenshots. I don't, I'm well aware that I've just gone to a random image on the screen that makes me look incredibly big-headed. But I just want to sort of talk you through uh, roughly uh, what some of these images are. So. This is my, um, so you may have noticed that when games come on initially, you get something like this, which is an epilepsy warning, and then you'll get a studio logo, and then it'll say made with whatever technology, and then it'll go into the game. That's all that these are, so I've just got these ready to grab so that when we set our project up in Unity, we can just pop all these straight in. Um, so these aren't too much to worry about at the moment. Don't worry about it. I suppose you can pause it and read it if you want to. It's only just a normal epilepsy, but maybe if you have epilepsy, you should read it. But, um... Uh, but yeah, just so just so you can get a rough idea of what those are. So this is the important screen, guys. So this is what we want our screen to look like. This isn't polished, guys. Please bear that in mind. Um, this is just a rough idea of how it's going to look. 
So everything looks a little bit basic at the moment, but again, for a game moment when we're testing the concept, it's not about looks. It doesn't have to be the prettiest game in the world yet. It just has to work the way we want it to work. And that's what we've aimed to do with this. So we've got our little logo at the top here. We know that we're on our first patient. We know what the condition is. We've got their um, weight and age so that we can, so that later on if we wanted to put in um, doses adjustments and things like that, we could do. But again, we're not worrying about that yet. All we need, all we know is that we want to administer something and I've just moved that. So let's go back. There's ghosts in my Mac boot today, I swear. Right, um, here's our ambulance. So all of this here, which is this city scene here. So the ambulance is going to stay still. And then all of this city scene here, which you can see with a little dotted ant running around it here, is going to be what's called a rolling road. So it's going to move across the screen sort of a little bit like this, or, or maybe like this, I can't remember what direction the camera's going. That's going to move, the ambulance is going to stay still to give the illusion that the ambulance is moving. Also to give the illusion that the ambulance is moving, we want this body here to bounce up and down as it's going along the road, as if it's going over bumps in the road. And we also want these wheels to be spinning as well so that we can see that the ambulance is moving. We may have a little flashing light up here as well. Yeah, I just haven't put that on yet. Um, so that is going to be... So, wait. That's going to be like the first thing we're going to put together when we do our when we do our moment after we've put everything together. What is going on with my MacBook today? Um, then we've got all the patient stats on the left here so we can see how much health they've got left. We can see if their heart's beating, how fast it's beating. Uh, heart rate, BP. Uh, and then we've got buttons here to shock them, administer morphine, CPR. These are going to change depending on what this is up here. Um, so there are ways of doing that. I think they're called states in Unity, but we'll worry about that later. Um, and then we've got... Really? Really? Um, and then we've got the journey. We know how far we've come. We could even put the health of the vehicle in as well, which is actually something I've forgotten to miss, forgotten to put in. And because I've gone back to my inspiration, I've seen that. So you, you see why this is handy now. <laughs> Um, so press for the lights, press to swerve, press to stop again. So that you know roughly what we're doing with the concepts. Okay guys, so next thing that we're going to do is we're going to jump in. Uh, I'm going to show you how to, well I'm not going to show you, I'm going to set it all up in Unity, you're going to see how it's done. Um, we'll get a build, we'll get a rough build running. Um, and we will go from there. Okay guys, so welcome to Unity. Um, this is um, this is so the this is what's called the Unity Hub. This is what we're going to be starting out with. So um, yes, I do have an old one here. <coughs> there is literally nothing in it. It's not set up correctly. So I am going to literally start this from scratch, so you can see how it's done. So we're going to be doing a two D game. I'm going to call it Meditrail. Um, trail new because I know if I press the two key, I'm going to lose my. St <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's the path I want to save it to. Yes, okay, good. Okay guys, so welcome to Unity. So, what it's conveniently done here is given me the project settings. So I am literally, I'm going to close that and I'm going to show you roughly what's going on here. So, here's our scene, which is our main sort of game scene. And here's what our game will look like. So at the moment, if we were to play our game, nothing happens. So, <coughs> At the moment, our game is just a blue screen. What we're going to do before anything else is we're going to set up our project settings. So, we know that we want to build this for PC and Mac. Personally, I'm going to target it for Mac for now. Um, because obviously I'm running on a Mac, so if I try and do it on Windows, it's going to give me issues. Um, this tells us what scenes we want to include in the build. And then in our settings. So. Get 
Studios. Little trail. So I don't have an icon yet, but if I did, it'd go there. You know, we want it to open in full screen. Right, the support running background. So I'm not going to play with this too much. Um, this is sort of more what I'm concerned with at the moment. So. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to this. that for now. Um, we're going to create an images folder. We're going to grab everything we've created so far. Which is these guys. Own images. I'm going to bring our concept in as well so that we can see it. Always good to work with a concept nearby. And then let's go back into those settings. And now set these up. <coughs> so let's see this one first. to read it. Then our studio. And then there's this unity one you can't actually remove. But it looks okay to be fair. Um light on dark. Yep. And have a quick look at that. Let's just see that again. Yep. So I think that's looking good, guys. And then it will go into our main screen. So... By the way, you can take this Unity logo off if you buy the Pro version, just so you know. So, I think all this isn't particularly relevant to us. So at some point we'll put an icon together and then we'll stick it in there. <laughs> so that's all good. 
so is that. Nope. Not really concerned with physics at the moment. These are just the qualities that we want to have, or add different if we want different levels, etc. But we'll just leave that as it all is. I don't think it really needs to change, to be fair. <coughs> and again, all this is the sort of pro stuff, really, so we don't really need to particularly worry about that. So, close that. Okay. So if we build and run, not much is going to happen, but... You will see our intro screen, and we'll see it in full screen. There we go. And then we go into our blue screen. So. So guys, what did that tell us? So, I think that animation is a bit annoying. So... And that looks better. Maybe give everyone a bit longer to read it though. So one last adjustment. seconds on that. And then we'll see if we've got time to run it. I have to read it even. That looks better, doesn't it, guys? Okay, so... Let's make a couple more quick adjustments. So what we'll do is I'm going to rename there. This is the main game screen. Okay guys, so you see this colour here. Blue isn't really very hospitally, so we're gonna bring in a better colour for that. So this is where we can have a look at our concept and see if it matches. So Get an exact colour. <coughs> so, 
pick up what colour from here. Pop back into Unity. Pop that in there. And we've got an exact colour match. So, we know that we're going to need Title screen. We know that we're going to need an intro. We know that we're going to need an inventory, don't we? So. an upgrade screen. So this is what we need for now. We could even have if we wanted to. So this is going to be our game essentially. One, two, three, four, five, five different screens. Um, that's it really. So we also know that we're going to need a folder for our scripts. We'll create a folder for oops. Create a folder for audio. And finally any kind of fonts that we decide to pull in. So now we've changed that, we'll save it. When it runs, we should get a white screen. Yep, okay. Good. And then if we... Just a sort of proof of concept. Take this. Um, let me zoom out a bit. So now we've got a pretty good idea of what the game's going to look like. So if we save that, play it. There we go, and we can see what it's going to look like. Yes, it doesn't fit, but um, it does mean that we'll go straight from our logos into that if we were to build. So. Build and run.
And there you have it. Okay, guys, so that's the first steps for our game. Um, that I'm, I'm so pleased I managed to get this out on time. Uh, well, hopefully I'll get it out on time. It's now ten past ten on Sunday, and hopefully I can get it edited within the next hour. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, okay, guys, so that's part one. I'll be back with part two next month, where we're going to be looking at um, just starting to create our game moment, deconstructing everything, putting the UI together and things like that. Um, I know this one was a little bit dry, but it is sort of the essential, so you can see where it's going and things like that. Um, just give you a rough idea of what I've been doing. I didn't want you to sit there and watch me do all the design stuff. It's taken me hours. You would be bored. So I thought also if I did a recap, that would be a little bit better than you watching me go over it. I have done a little bit of Unity in this and not waffled too much throughout the Unity part. As I said, I wasn't going to. So, remember guys, I got that web address wrong. www.webdevelopwolf.co.uk forward slash den. Go and check that out. There's going to be a new review on there in the next few days of the 911 operator game. Um, also going to be uh, sort of talking you through uh, roughly what we've done here as well. And, uh, you know, so that you can see what's to come. And uh, you can download some of the resources for yourself, things like that. So, um, again, guys, welcome to 2020. It's good to be back for the new year. Um, and like I said, this year is going to be like the year for the channel. Um, and I want to I wanna do things for you guys. So make me know, let me know if you do. So if you do, give me a subscribe, give me a like on the video as well. Let me know if you like what you see. If you do like what you see, come and join the pack. Um, and guys, thank you for watching as always. Thank you for subscribing as always. And um, I will see you in the next video. And you know why I'll see you in the next video, guys? Because gamers never die. They just respawn. Peace. Peace.